Okay, so um, I've still got some students um, and uh, members of the public, people writing comments on various videos about um, installing Jupyter Python with PIP. So I made this as a kind of follow-up troubleshooting video if you're still having difficulty. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got a Windows VM here, right? And I'm just going to go down here, I'm going to type add remove. Okay, that's going to open up add or remove programs. And then I'm going to type in here, Python. Okay, and we have these two files, Python 3.10.2 and Python Launcher. Okay, so I have already installed Python on this machine. When you buy your laptop or your computer, it doesn't come with Python. Okay, so let's uninstall. And let's uninstall the Python launcher as well. Okay, this little thing is going to come up, tell us that it's uninstalling Python. Da da da. Goodbye, Python. While Python's uninstalling, let me go into my web browser, uh, open up Firefox, and let's just get ready to download Python again. So let's search in here, Python. Here we are at python.org. So we'll just leave this web page sitting in the background while we're waiting for Python to uninstall. So let's uninstalling the test suite. So I think the other thing that people are getting confused with is to do with the path so what actually is the path right so if i press on my windows computer here windows key and r it's going to bring up the little run box and if i type cmd that's going to open up the command prompt now see if i type the command in the cmd shell okay dir right dir is going to show me my path Okay, so it's C users Michael. Now, from the path, okay, we can run particular commands. For example, I just ran the command dir, but there's no file in here called dir. So, so where actually is dir? Dir is a program, um, a Windows program that lists directories. It's somewhere else on the system. But look, if I cd into documents, right, or if I cd into, say, let's go into um, the contacts folder, right, I can still do dir, okay, because dir works anywhere because it's in my path. So what do I actually mean by that? Right, let me just clear the screen again. If I type path, okay, and press return, I have all these variables, all these paths saved in my path. So I can run things that are located in these locations anywhere on the computer. Okay, anywhere I go, this user, Michael, he takes with him these paths. Okay, so system 32 is a place where uh, programs and kind of uh, important binaries of Windows are stored. Okay, we've got some other ones like App Data, App Data local Microsoft Windows apps. Right. So, what we actually need to do when we install Python is we need to add Python to our path so that we can run Python and run Python programs from anywhere in the system, from documents, from desktop. Okay, so if you type uh, Python and it says it's not a recognized command or batch file, it's likely you have installed Python, but you've installed it away into a folder in here somewhere, and your user can't find it because it doesn't know what the path is to find Python. And likely if you cd'd, changed your way all the way into this, this stupid path, c colon slash this pc slash app data slash local slash something else slash da 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 slash python okay so when you set the path for python what you're doing is you're saying to the computer okay add this to my path 
Right. So hopefully, if you were unsure what that meant, then that's making that a little bit clearer. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this stupid Python launcher as well. That's fully uninstalled. Right. So we don't have, there's no Python installed. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just so I'll type Python here and see what happens. Funny if it just worked, even though it just installed. Right. It's trying to get me to go to the Microsoft Store to, to install Python. Right. Let's not do that. Okay, let's let's not do that. So I'm just gonna close this down here. Minimize that. Right. Let uninstall was successful. Good. Okay. So let's go back to python.org and let's go to downloads. Okay, and let's download Python, this one here, Python 3.10.2. So let's download that, right? Do you want to save this file? It's 20. 6.9 meg, right, save file, that'll download, display the progress, completed, perfect, okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go to our downloads folder, and there's the executable there, okay, and you want to double click on it to start the Python install, okay, now, this is a very important step here, See this thing here, add Python 3.10 to path. That's the path that I was just talking about, your path on the computer. So what you're, what you're telling Windows uh, by doing that is you're saying, I want to be able to run Python programs from anywhere on the system. I don't want to have to go specifically into the Python folder to run Python programs. So let's tick that, okay, and hit install now. thinking about it installing Python 3.10.2 now back on uh, back in the old days before we had this this launcher in, in Python 2 and um, you didn't have the luxury of doing that you had to manually actually set the path uh, but nowadays we've got this this nice launcher all we have to do is tick a box we don't have to do any manual um, now interestingly it said it was installing something called pip there which is quite useful right let's hit close okay now we can actually delete this now right we don't need it stick it in the recycle bin okay so now if we go back to now I don't know maybe I need to log out and log back in but let's have a look at the path now path so we've got app data, local, Microsoft, Windows apps set in there, right? So I think that that is the path variable that we needed. Okay, so let me just try typing Python. Okay, it's doing it again. Now this is good, this is good because I'm experiencing what other people are experiencing. Okay, so close. So what I'm gonna do, right, when in doubt with Windows, we're going to restart it and let's just see if logging out and logging back in again will fix this path issue. What we don't want to do is try and install Python again from a different place because I mean I would hope that the one from the Microsoft Store installs in the same place as the one from uh, Python.org but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it. Okay, so let's let this machine log in. Right, let's get, so Windows key in R, CMD, Python. Right, that's worked. Okay, so, click. Let's try path again. Right, now, okay, so, Probably logging out and logging back in did something with group policy or something like that. Let's have a wee look. So, see users, app data, local, programs, Python 3.10. Okay, there's this thing about Python scripts as well. Have now been added to my path. So I can now run my CD into the contacts directory. I can type Python and Python will run right there. Okay, I can do 
Open. Hello. And Python will interpret that. Great, so it's quit function. Now, now that we have the path set, okay, we can now run Python commands from anywhere we like on the system. So we stay inside cmd.exe and we're going to do pip install Jupyter lab. Okay, pip install Jupyter lab. Now, what we're we'll what pip is is pip is Python install package, right? Pip is a Python package manager. A package manager just means you can tell the package manager a package you want, and it'll go onto the internet, get the package, download it onto your computer. Right. So it looks like this is finished. Now, the command there I wrote was pip install JupyterLab, and JupyterLab's all one word. Okay, but to run JupyterLab, we're going to type Jupyter minus lab, like that, and press return. And here we go, we have JupyterLab. Okay. So if we want to open up a notebook, now what's going to happen is this is running on a local web server, okay? When yours first starts, it'll probably start on the light theme like that, okay? It'll probably look something like this. Let me just zoom this back a wee bit because it's like 150% zoomed in. Okay, so um, if we want to make a new notebook, we can just click here, all right, and we can have our code cells, print, da -da -da, hello, Okay, and we can press control and return and it'll and it'll run. Hello. Right. So this is working just fine. Now let's just say somewhere in this notebook we need to use some kind of a different library. So we need to type import. Okay. Um and I'll I'll just make one up that doesn't exist. Um H H D D five. Okay. Return. Um okay. Module not found. No module named HHDD4. Now, there are some real modules out there, okay, like import CSV. But occasionally, you're going to get this error. No module name. Now, when that happens, that's when you need to go back to CMD, back to pip in the command line. So, let me just open a new shell, right, control R, Windows key in R, CMD, right, and type pip install hhdd44 or whatever it was called and then what pip's going to do is go online get that and then put it in with your other python stuff okay so so that's how we use pip to install stuff as long as we've got the path set properly right now that we have jupyter lab installed okay this window will stay open and jupyter lab kind of runs as a web server uh, in the background and it should it should just open like that now what this is an example of is an IDE, okay, a development environment. Now Python does come with another one called idle, okay, um, and idle is just a very simple um, editor that we can use, okay. Looks a bit like this, all right. The problem is idle isn't as obviously as full featured as JupyterLab. Now there are other ways to install JupyterLab. There is a thing called Anaconda. There is um, Miniconda, okay? There is actually now a JupyterLab desktop app, an Electron app, okay? My criticism of these ways is that, like, Anaconda is about one gig. Uh, the JupyterLab desktop app is about 500 meg, okay? And that's without adding on your apps. So I like to do it this way with pip because, as you just saw, it just it takes seconds because you're only getting just the things you want. Whereas, if you have to install Anaconda, you don't just install Anaconda, you install Anaconda and a whole load of other stuff that you might need for data science as well. So hopefully, this is a helpful video for people who are getting stuck. And see if it says, like, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna type a command that doesn't exist, right? So let's do pi, on 
uh, but we'll take away the Y. Okay, so Piton, right, run. Piton is not recognized as an internal or external command because what Windows just did there is it went and searched all my paths, all the all of these look, path, all of these paths, including my current directory, right? All of that. Searched around all of that and it couldn't find it. So if you type Python and it says that, okay, you might actually have Python installed, you just haven't got the path set properly. Or you might not have it installed at all. So hopefully that clears up anyone who's stuck uh, with this error. Um, and in future, uh, if you've made it to the end of this video, um, when a student gets stuck with this error, I'm going to refer them um, to this so that they can watch it. Hopefully that's helpful.